Today's interview is with Chris Berez. So he's a pioneer in the field of health and a leading expert on the Nobel Prize winning molecule ESS60. So this molecule has been shown to boost longevity and overall health in subjects, anything from um, mental clarity to exercise performance to enhance sleep. Really fascinating uh, little molecule here. Um, Chris learned uh, that ESS60 was tested by NASA and had been proven to almost double the lifespan in mammals. So he has made it his mission to provide the world with this nano antioxidant and anti-inflammatory supplement to potentially increase longevity. Um, he gets into a rat study where the rat's uh, lifespan was increased by 90% who were exposed to this molecule. So it's definitely interesting for sure. And I'm excited for you guys to kind of dive in, listen to what he has to say um, and, and you know, consider it as a possible biohack for increasing longevity. I definitely found this um, interview really interesting. Um, we even talked about sleep. We actually got into like some deep discussions. Um, he was doing a sleep study with Aura Ring um, and talked about his experience with using this molecule and how it impacted his sleep. So it could be a solution there. Um, and also we just get into like the phases of sleep and why those matter also. So some cool information on, um, just biohacking in general, but also increasing longevity. If that's something you're into, this may be something you might want to consider and try out. Um, at the end of the interview, he does get, offer you guys a discount on his products to so make sure you listen to that. Um, it's just my vital C that's the letter C my vital C.com slash inside out. So, uh, make sure you take advantage of that as you're listening to this. If you want to try it, um, you can get a discount for $15 off your first shipment on that. So just want to give you a heads up because that he brings that up at the end, but yeah, nice little biohacking chat we're getting into today. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here is Chris Perez. So I want to tell you guys about one of my favorite finds in the health industry in the last few years. It's something I use with all my clients, and that has been extremely impacting on me as well. And that's the upgraded formulas, hair mineral tests, their consults, and their nanoparticle size minerals. So um, I started on this path because I was taking in a high quality magnesium. And when I tested, I found out that I was extremely deficient in magnesium. And once I started using their nanoparticle size magnesium, my levels went right up. And what I experienced was incredible. I started getting more or REM sleep. I was, I realized I hadn't been dreaming in years, started dreaming again, and also noticed that I didn't think I had anxiety until I got my magnesium back up and noticed that I was experiencing quite a lot of anxiety and that went away and I was able to enter back into a place of calm and peace. And, um, it was just incredible. And so since then I've been using it with all of my clients and it's so easy. All you have to do, they'll mail you out a little envelope and you just put some hair in it and mail it back into their lab. And then you do a consult with them over the phone and they'll tell you all about your ratios, what's high and what's low, because you can't know this unless you test, there's no way to know. And you can't just crap shoot minerals. You have to make sure that your ratios are on point. So they will tell you exactly what you need more of exactly what you need less of to get those ratios on point. So you can have optimized brain health and hormones and sleep and metabolism. So, um, they're also giving you 10% off for being an inside out health listener. So that code is just inside out. So, um, go to upgradedformulas.com and just enter inside out at checkout and you'll get 10% off their consults, um, the hair tests and any products that you may need to get your ratios, right? So, um, yeah, take advantage of it, guys. It's something I use with every single one of my clients. It's been wildly impacting, and I'm happy to be able to extend that discount on to you guys too, as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Okay. So Chris, fill us in where, like, where did you stumble across this molecule? <laughs> how, yeah. how did this happen? You know, where'd you find this? This is so fascinating. I can't wait to dig in. All right. So, um, first up for those who are watching, I'm actually holding up a model of the molecule for those who mm. are listening. If you imagine a soccer ball, the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. So we have a spherical molecule of 60 carbon atoms. Uh, and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, it, it's an amazing material. The guys who discovered it actually won the Nobel Prize for it. Uh, it's a, associated with the single longest longevity result in history. Um, and I, my company has been manufacturing it since 1991. So like, I'm excited to get together with you. And, and thank you so much for having me uh, on your show. Yeah, no, I'm definitely, I mean, who's not interested with an intro like that? So, so, so tell us like, you know, when, when they won the Nobel prize, like what happened? When was it anyway that it yeah. won? 
Yeah. So in, in 1985, he, actually here in Houston, three professors, um, well, one of two of them were based at Rice University here in Houston. Uh, one was out of the UK. Uh, they discovered the third form of carbon. So we're familiar with diamond. We're familiar with graphite. And now there's a third and it's a whole gamut of molecules. Right. So C60, that soccer ball shaped one. Uh, then C70 is a little more oblong shaped, more like a rugby ball. Uh, C76 starts getting more round and they just keep getting bigger and kind of more symmetrical as as they grow. The most abundant one is this. It's called a buckyball, the one with 60 carbon atoms. And they discovered really that shape because of some of the scientific data that they had from an impressive piece of equipment. And, and so they discovered that in 85. Uh, by 96, so a short 11 years, they had won the Nobel Prize. And people are like, well, why did they win the Nobel Prize? Um, you know, just discovering s- stuff doesn't necessarily win you a Nobel Prize. But right. uh, the way I describe the material, it performs as well or better than the current best material in almost every application. So it makes better tires, it makes better paints, it makes better batteries, it makes better photo cells. The only reason we're not using it in all of those things is actually very expensive to make. So mm-hmm. its price point doesn't allow it to be utilized in a lot of these situations where it could be, uh, where, where it actually is a better material than what's there, right? So that's an engineering decision. Uh, it is true. So, so current battery technology is really based on lithium uh, and it is cost competitive with lithium. So we might actually see a Bucky battery uh, pretty soon. And that would be very exciting for me because, you know, again, I've been working with us so, from the beginning, seeing all these potential applications mm. and really, really the industry didn't start to grow in any appreciable way uh, until kind of late mid 2017. Wow. Okay. So layman's terms for, you know, the non-scientists, basically what you're saying is it's behaving like an antioxidant. Okay. So when you start talking about bringing it into the body, right, that starts changing the topic entirely. And in fact, Mm. um, there was a a, a study that was released in 2012. uh, And that study was, it's actually a toxicity study. They, for various Mm. reasons, they thought this buckyball would be toxic. So, uh, and also you, you kind of put two pieces together. So like one is um, it's it's performing really well in a great many applications. So it's highly probable that we're gonna have people working with this material on a regular basis. Anytime you do that, you gotta have a toxicity study. You gotta know like, can I breathe it? Like, do I need to wear a mask? Like, you know, in, mm-hmm. in the era of masks right now, do yeah. I need to like wear a legitimate mask that actually filters out particles, you know, with kind of a, asbestos spheres. And so they did this toxicity study. They published the results in 2012. And in this study, what they did is they gave rats water, rats olive oil, and then rats olive oil with the ESS60 molecule. That's that, that soccer ball shaped molecule. Instead of being toxic, those rats that they that they really they gave the my vital C formula to, those rats lived 90% longer than the control group. That's now, crazy. Yes, absolutely nuts. Like off the charts, the next best way to live longer, and it's actually better researched, uh, is calorie restriction. And I'm not talking about intermittent fasting, although they're saying that some of the markers that happen in intermittent fasting mirror what happens on true calorie restriction. But the good data is actually on full-on calorie yeah. restriction. It's well documented if you reduce your calorie consumption. By the way, I always like to point this out: based on your BMI, not based on what you're eating today, <laughs> right? Because we're Americans and we tend to right. overeat uh, yeah. in general. Um, reduce that calorie consumption by 30% and you can extend your life by 30%. And that's done Mm -hmm. in multiple animal models. So rats and pigs and all sorts of animal models. So um, we have a lot of a great amount of confidence that that's true in humans, but that's a 30%. And I call that diet the starve yourself one third to death diet. And (laughs) it doesn't seem like anybody's signing up for that diet. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a marketing thing. Um, Mm -hmm. Again, that's 30% extension the rats that they gave the my vital c formula to lived 90 percent longer than the control group now there's one other pretty remarkable result out of that so in that study they used wistar rats and a typical wistar rat will live out to 32 months and they will have a known amount of tumor so as the months go by the tumor mass in their body increases that's just how a wistar rat is the my vital c rats even though they lived 90 percent longer out to 62 months 
none of them died with any tumors, right? Hmm. So I'll tell some people this and they're wow. like, oh, then it's a cure for cancer. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> there's a big difference. And it's very important to kind of stress this. There's a big difference between um, being able to handle a cancer that's already metastasized, right? So being some sort mm -hmm. of cancer cure and then being a cancer preventative. They're right. vastly, vastly different things. We know things like sleep and exercise and eating well are cancer preventative. So that that result does indicate that that um, the My Vital C formula has a good likelihood of being a, a cancer preventative. It's interesting what you're saying because um, you know if you have a very basic understanding of how the body works, you can see that calorie restriction, it makes sense that it extends lifespan because that's when your body is able to repair. Like, it's like, finally you stopped freaking eating. I can finally stop digesting and sending all this stuff places. So I can take a freaking break from that and repair some of your cells and, and renew some of these linings and do all these things. So it, to me, it makes perfect sense. Like, um, but you hit it in the nail on the head. It's, the age that we live in, we, it's like, we did such a good job. We did such a good job with our, um, food system and our like making everything convenient and our shelters are so cool. We don't even want to leave them and get any vitamin D. Like we love it in our shelters. They've got Wi-Fi yeah. and they're climate controlled. And like, we did such a good job modernizing that we kind of like did it to our detriment a little bit with health. And it's just, you know, calorie restriction. It's like, basically like you gotta be, you gotta be a very disciplined person to consistently be calorie restricting in your life. And the reality is a lot of people aren't going to do that. So I, I, I would think that it's fair to say that that's just unsustain, unsustainable. I mean, for, for most few, people, absolutely yeah. in general, unsustainable, I, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's why we, you know, as a society kind of wrestle with dieting. Cause I mean, the older mentality about dieting was just pure on calorie restriction and that'll get you somewhere. It just won't keep you there. Right. Like, in, and we were having a right. very interesting conversation before we started uh, about kind of the mental health. Aspect. It's not even mental health because that has different implications about the actually my friend that I mentioned to you, Patrick Juanis, talks about the law of deservedness. Right. Where do I deserve to be in terms of health? Right. And when you talk about weight, it, it really is two things. That's actually health. So like, do I deserve to be healthy and have all the advantages of being a healthy. And then it goes to attractiveness, right? Do what is my internal belief about how attractive I'm supposed to be? Hmm. Those are drivers driving what you're eating and driving, picking yeah. up the cookie or the celery yeah. on, a, on a minute by minute basis. Um, and, and I think that's why really, you know, really why yo-yo dieting exists, right? I can mm -hmm. willpower to a certain point, but if yeah. my subconscious believes I'm supposed to be some other way for yep. whatever health. I'm not supposed to be healthy or attractive. I'm not supposed to be attractive. Then it will always win. Like it just will always win. Yeah. Those core beliefs have to be so powerful because the biological urge to overeat is real. Like we are yep. wired that way for survival. So your belief systems are going to have to drive you really hard to be able to be in a state where you're actually calorie restricting long-term. And on top of it, what you're saying is like, that's a 30% increase in lifespan. This is interesting to me because like with biohacking, obviously, you know, this is like ultimate biohacking right here. And with biohacking, the way I look at it is this is does it mimic something in nature that we've lost because of our modern lifestyle? Mm. Right. So P P E M F or, um, you know, l light therapies, like we're, we're missing some of that stuff because we're inside all day. We're, yeah. we're buried. There's barriers, um, cold showers. Another thing, would I get into cold water out in nature? Would I be exposed to cold more than I currently am? Yes, I would. So that makes sense to me. Um, yeah. so it's interesting, you know, this, this molecule, um, it's kind of like, I see it as a potentially a way to bring into our modern lifestyle, something that has been lost because of our disconnection from nature. Um, I'm just still like my nerdy side is like, how is it working in the body? What is happening? It's just turning over cellular renewal or what, what, what does it do? Well, that, that's a great question. And, and although there's, you know, depending on what circle you're in, there can be debate about what causes aging. A lot of kind of medical uh, practice, medical science believes that it's associated with inflammation uh, and oxidation, right? Mm -hmm. So those are so, some of the key things. Um, and it's well known, I have to be very careful here because of the FDA. Um, mm -hmm. It's well known that we're a good antioxidant, right? So that's awesome. 
Um, the other side, kind of on the inflammation, uh, the FDA has decided for whatever reason that to speak about inflammation is to speak about disease, right? Mm -hmm. Which we know, like you work out, you felt inflamed and you know, it wasn't caused by a disease unless you want to call working out a disease. (laughs) So (laughs) muscle growth is a disease. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So So, but for whatever reason they have, so I have to be careful. So what I say is that, that our product fits naturally in uh, an anti-inflammatory diet. And those diets are associated with people who have reduced incidences of stroke, reduced incidences of heart attacks. Uh, And so it's, it's interesting that, you know, in terms of addressing this 90% extension of life in these Wistar rats, it's interesting that the product ticks two of the key boxes that medical science associates with aging. I also, I mean, one of, so I'm still, we're still trying to put it together. And, and, and the shorter answer uh, is, is really Tara that somebody smarter than me is going to figure this out and they just haven't figured it out yet. Right. Like exactly mm-hmm. what is the mechanism? We do know that it got, does get into the mitochondria and participates in the ATP processes. Hmm. And if you were in a room full of kind of mitochondrial experts and said, hey, would, would a free radical sponge be useful in inside of the mitochondria? And they'll say, it, it, they would all say yes, right? Because that is spinning off uh, the free radicals and having something that can process or you know capture and or process uh, those free radicals in that moment really help. I actually have a lot of conversations with my director of research where he's talking about the possibility that this that this ESS60 molecule is adding a little bit of a stressor. You talked about like, hey, stop eating, you know, now you can repair your body. Well, it's kind of like our bodies repair. We do uh, we do a lot more um, autophagy when when our bodies are stressed, right? Our body, so so you have these cells in your yeah. body, these zombie cells, senescent cells that are that are sitting there and they're not really doing their job anymore. We'll call them kind of older. They're the the last generation of cells that are sitting in your body. They're not yeah. really doing their job, but they are taking resources. And your body hasn't gotten around to getting rid of them yet, or they haven't automatically killed themselves off, which is typically what's supposed to happen. Uh, and so when you stress your body, um, theoretically, it's when you get into that you know ice cold bath. Uh, it's when you go on an intermittent fast, certainly on on ongoing calorie restriction, uh, hit exercise. All of these yeah. things are creating stresses in your body that causes it to actually uh, go to the autoph- go through the autophagy processes and get rid of those zombie yeah. cells. So I well have said. debates with my director of research where maybe this ESS60 molecule is actually um, uh, causing a little bit of stress and also happens to have the ability to absorb those free radicals. And now you've got something that's actually do, work, doing a dual purpose in your body that you know, we haven't really identified any other molecule that can do. This is really interesting to me. It's, it's cool to see your process on this because it's like so often, I feel like I always say mother nature is my teacher right? I'm like, anybody who says that they know how the body works is lying. (laughs) Not a single person on earth knows how the body works. I'm like, sorry. I always tell like my, my audience on Instagram and my clients, I'm like, I'm really hate to break this to you, but I don't know how the body works. Okay. (laughs) And and no one does. I'm like, if somebody says they figured it out, tell them to make one out of scratch. Oh, you can't. Okay. Then you don't understand. You don't yeah, understand not, works, you haven't right? figured it out yet. Yeah, there's yeah. so much we don't know. And so I look to Mother Nature as my guide. I'm like all the all the clues, all the keys to how this all works. I just have to observe and stand in awe and say, hmm, there's a clue. And so I think what's interesting is like what I'm hearing from you is that like you're observing the effects of this molecule. You don't, we can't fully understand yet like exactly what is happening, but you've observed those effects over and over and over. Um, what other what other benefits or, or effects have you noticed from this molecule? Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I, I'll, I'll first tell you like our most consistent testimonial from our customers is that they take the product in the morning, uh, they report mental focus and energy during the day and then better sleep that night. By the, by the way, like if, if we just took like inflammation and oxidation and an antioxidant out of the equation and just said, hey, we gave you better sleep, we all 
I don't know, it's not inherently, but it's all been drilled into our brain that sleep is good for your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. Like, I don't think anybody would even start the process of arguing that. <laughs> uh, but we also, as a society, don't do sleep justice, right? We're like, right. sleep, it's so important. It's good for your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. I'm going to get my sleep. Well, you know, unless I have something else to do. And yep. then, you know, I'll totally. just sleep later. Um, Guilty. <laughs> we're the only, yeah, we're the only species that will go, f will forego sleep for no healthful reason, right? Like, yeah. so animals in the wild, they're missing sleep because they're actually escaping a predator or maybe going after food that they haven't had in a long time, but they don't miss sleep unless it's for healthful reason. We miss sleep, you know, and it's fun, but we miss sleep to go dancing. Now we could argue dancing's healthy, but whatever. That's yeah. like dance during the day is, is a way that you could get your sleep. Um, so sleep really does have this benefit. Um, what I think is important is you look at, ha have you read the book, uh, Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker? I haven't. Oh, you got to read this book. Okay. It's, a, it's an absolutely phenomenal book. And I call it the Freddy Krueger of sleep books because it will scare the pants off of you when it comes to sleep. Cause this guy has been researching, he's at Harvard, been researching sleep for like 20 years. And this is all the data. Like cool. when you miss this cool. much sleep, you can't remember this much. When you mm. miss this much sleep, your cardiovascular system mm. suffers in this way. When mm. you miss this much sleep, your blood sugar is, goes out of control in this way. I don't know if you know this. So we do this very interesting sleep experiment every two years here in the States and in, in, in a lot of the world um, where we do daylight savings time. When we lose an hour, heart attacks go up by like 23%. Wow. When we gain an hour, they go down. And I remember the number was a little off. So like really? 20%, a little, slightly off. So that's how, wow. like, if you think your sleep doesn't affect your cardiovascular health, again, you just don't know the human body, which is, except, which is okay, because nobody does. <laughs> wow, that's, you know, I just posted yesterday on my little Instagram story because I like to run and I was sleep deprived. I only got like four and a half hours sleep. I own it. I, I do, I do prioritize sleep, but sometimes that happens. Yep. And I went for a run the next morning and I just fully posted. I'm like, this suck, this run sucked because, uh, because my sleep was down. Like I, I, I call sleep the world's uh, most powerful pre-workout <laughs> for yep. athletic performance. And so in that cardiovascular, I mean, I, that's what I noticed is I just didn't have the cardiovascular capacity that I normally do. So, wow, that's, that's really, well, I think, I think you're, you're exactly right. Like the most powerful pre-workout. I also think it's like the most powerful healer. Yeah. Like oh, for sure. Is okay. when we heal. So, so that book is phenomenal. And what he talks about in that book is the $2 billion sleep, sleep aid. I'm doing air quotes, sleep aid industry, um, mm -hmm. which is basically prescription medications that you take right before you go to sleep. And what they do in your body is kind of interesting because there's a chemical actually ATP in the ATP process of, of that happens in the mitochondria. The A is adenosin. And as that, as that A is released, it builds up in our body and that causes us to desire sleep. So these prescription drugs, uh, and I think, I, I can't remember if it was Dr. Walker who came up with it or another friend of mine who described, if I hit you on the hammer and you're unconscious for eight hours, do you wake up and say, wow, I feel rested? <laughs> no, that's what those prescription drugs are doing. They're actually knocking you unconscious. You wake up and the chemical pressure to desire sleep. So that adenosine has been relaxed, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't desire sleep which feels good. Like, I mean, just to wake up and not feel like, oh, I need to go right back to sleep because I didn't get enough sleep, but it's not letting you get your REM and your in REM sleep. That's where all of the healing happens in your body. Mm. Those you take right before you go to sleep. Our product you take in the morning, report mental focus and energy during the day, and then better sleep that night. And I'm in the process of a sleep study. We talked a little bit about this with the, with Aura Ring. There's a, a professor, his name's Benjamin. He's out of the University of California, uh, San Diego, and he's a consultant for Aura Ring. So has access to the backend data. And we started this whole protocol uh, at the end of 2019. And it, 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 it did get waylaid by COVID because it turns out that the Aura Ring is actually a pretty good COVID detector. Um, and so he's just busy, press junket, you know, data, everything related to COVID, as you can imagine. Um, what we've done is we've actually continued some people just on the survey side. So if they do have an aura ring, we can go back and look at the data and how it supports the surveys that they've given us. 
Hmm. And we've had about five people go through this and, and it is consistent that, and, and here's, the, here's how that study's working. We collect 10 days of data before they ever try the product, 10 days of data on the product, 10 days of data off the product, and then 10 more days back on the product. Very and cool. it is consistent across the mm. board, their baseline, which is obviously the first 10 days versus their final 10 days on the product. It's always an increase. Their sleep is always better. Uh, and so we've got so, and we're working on like more data to really support this, uh, th this testimonial that our customers have given us. Are you noticing an increase in REM or deep or both or what, what, how has it affected their sleep? So I'll tell you, uh, and, and really the only data that I have is, so I've got one piece of data where the guy actually took screenshots of his aura ring like every day. Right. And so I got to see what his REM was and you know, the, the, the ring drops off if you sleep funny and the sensors come off your skin. Um, he had a noticeable increase in, in deep sleep. I can tell you in my case, first off, I've been on it. I, I, I've been taking the product on a daily basis since 2019. And I knew that coming into 2020, I was going to, I had just started the ring. I bought the oil ring. I was going to have to like do 10 days off of it. Uh, but I also, my schedule was packed for January and February and I was traveling and there was going to be jet lag. It helped me with, I, I knew that it helps me with that because I've been on other trips I was like, there was no way I was going to skip my product in January and February. So I actually took it at the beginning of, I, I think I, the 10 days off, I don't remember the exact date, but it was in the beginning of March. Um, an interesting note. So first, first up, so I don't have any real baseline where I've never taken the product is kind of one of my results. Also, mm -hmm. as far as ordering is concerned, I never get deep sleep. Like hmm. I just, you know, and, and we do know that they're approximating, you know, this, this determination that you have deep sleep. And I've ha I actually had this conversation with Benjamin uh, about like, how good is that approximation? Because, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you're in a sleep clinic, they're actually attaching electrodes to your brain and they're monitoring right. your brain waves. They're not just monitoring. Okay. So in my understanding, this is just my understanding. I haven't even read an article on it. I'm just like, I'm a scientist and this is how I would approach identifying what phase of sleep you're in. So there's an active and a slow, active, slow, active, slow. So I would be looking at, okay, I just they just had an active session. Now this next slow session, we're going to call it REM sleep or we're going to call it deep sleep. Hmm. And they don't, they're really just trying to back into determining what that sleep is versus you know knowing it because they know what the brain waves are going on in your brain so so there's some there's some room so i say all of that study to say yes there is one where it significantly increased his 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 uh, uh deep sleep and in my case i didn't really notice in deep sleep i don't i just apparently don't get any deep sleep I sleep good mm -hmm. and I sleep eight hours, mm -hmm. but I don't get very it. common, very common reports from my clients use aura rings and yeah. especially men, especially yeah. men. It's usually like minutes. It's like three minutes. I get yeah. hours, yeah. like three hours. It's crazy. Yeah. I I'm, I'm like the dead, but whenever people will say, how'd you sleep? Like when, if I'm on a trip, I'm like, it's just going to be the same answer every single morning, like, like a baby. Like I don't ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever wake up or notice anything. <laughs> so it's interesting. I think there may be a biological wiring there of just like how you come, you know, I, I wonder if it has to do with neurotransmitter balance, like naturally for a person. Sometimes I, I wonder with men, I'm like, is it because they have a lot of like life stress with business? Or is it because maybe they're wired that way from an ancestral standpoint for like protection to be more mm. alert in the middle of the night? Like, I don't know, but I've definitely noticed you were definitely not alone on that with especially men I've noticed get very little deep sleep. Yeah. yeah it, well, that, that seems to be the case with me. And I, and I, and I can't say I've always said I'm a, I feel like I'm both a light sleeper and an incredibly deep sleeper, meaning um, a noise will wake me up, but it's, it's like, I would say milliseconds are like, oh, that's not a danger. And I'm right. immediately back, back to sleep. Right. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm alert, but it, it like Interesting. process information really quickly right. and then, and then get back to sleep. Uh -huh. The other thing that was interesting, having conversations with Benjamin, right? So you would geek out on this. You're, you're talking with a guy who has access, access to like raw or all the data. data. Yeah. <laughs> just to know part of our protocol is people have to approve, Hey, he can go look at their data. This is not, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. not looking at people's data unless he's gotten <laughs> explicit approval from them. Yeah. Um, 
so for whatever reason, I was on the phone with him like, hey, you probably have data on people when they drink, like what happens to their sleep when they drink? And it was like, oh yeah. And he like sent me two charts of, of his own. After two glasses of wine, you'll see that his resting, your resting heart rate, if you haven't had alcohol, typically, right? So this is the typical result is actually pretty flat. It'll drop a little bit through the night, but by the time you've like gone through your process, you're in bed and you've fallen asleep, like it stays pretty low and drifts down a little bit. If you've had drinks, usually starting at about two drinks, obviously this depends on your kind of body size, your heart, your resting heart rate starts much higher and mm -hmm. takes a long time to get down to that flat mm -hmm. line. Right. And, and so he sent me those and I sent back mine after I've had a couple of drinks and it's flat. Hmm. Right. And so theoretically, we don't know, hasn't been scientifically tested or whatever, that the ESS 60 molecules helping process, help, helping metabolize that alcohol. Because we do, that is one of our testimonials mm -hmm. is that people were like, yeah, um, I'm, I feel less pain after a, after a, a night of drinking. Very interesting. I love all this talk. I, I had, um, it's reminding me, I had a, one of the founders of NutriSense on my podcast, which is a continuous glucose monitor. Mm. And it's cool. It was cool to talk to her about a lot of the data that they're gathering too, because they're finding out, you know, blood glucose response is not exactly what we always thought it was like, not everyone has a spike from bananas. Some might have hardly oh. any, and some might have a big strike from strawberries and some might not like, and so it's bio-individual. And I like this. I love this kind of talk because we're learning how bio-individual sleep is like, I, I don't know. I know some people are adverse to data, right? Like they won't get their DNA tested or whatever. I mm. get it. Uh, for me, it's risk versus reward. Like I want to know that stuff. I want to be the cutting on the cutting edge of what's happening inside my body. So thanks for sharing all of that. Um, I was, I was just looking at, at real-time glucose monitoring just the other day. Cause I don't know. Have you read uh, um, lifespan by David Sinclair? I haven't. Okay. I'm making a list here. Another <laughs> phenomenal book. Um, and he's probably the leading longevity uh, uh, medical researcher on the planet. Okay. Uh, certainly the probably, well, probably the most well-known he's very well known and he's got a, his protocol is actually fairly simple. It includes NMN, which is a NAD booster, NAD booster. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he has metformin, which is actually mm -hmm. for diet, like kind of low grade diabetes. Um, and there's some resort, uh, research that suggests or that shows those two actually impact sirtuin response, your body's response with sirtuins. And then he's got like actual data where he's manipulating the genes and sirtuins in different animal models and it's extending their life, mm -hmm. right? So I recently started taking metformin and uh, NMN and I'm like, well, metformin is designed to mess with your glucose, mm -hmm. I'd be very interested into understanding that. I don't want to prick mm -hmm. my finger every day. So I was even trying to figure out like, how do these devices even work? Are they Amazing. What? Amazingly. Yeah. No. Uh, and, and I love what you're talking about. I, I have used metformin quite a bit um, when I was on a ketogenic diet. So I specialize in keto. I don't, I'm not, I'm no longer keto right now. I think that keto is a great intervention. I don't think most people need to be on it mm. all the time, long-term. Yeah. Um, but when I was on it, I would use metformin. Um, if I was going to go out to a restaurant and mm. have some, you know, sweet potato fries with my dinner, I would definitely use metformin as a hack to kind of keep that blood sugar stabilized and lower. Um, I actually do metformin is one of the very few pharmaceuticals that I actually, as of now, from everything that I've heard, I am actually, I approve of it. I do see yeah. a lot of the benefit that's happening or you know, you could always use, um, berberine or something also is pretty similar, pretty similar. But, mm. um, the, to answer your question, the continuous glucose monitor, it has little teeny tiny probes that are just barely subcutaneous. And so you put it on the back of your arm, like on the fattiest part of the back of your arm. I did not feel it at all. I like at all. I was doing a video and I'm like, Oh, here we go. I like, I literally did not feel anything. And then it's, so those little probes just are right under your skin. They're just, um, reading like the capillary level. So it's wow. very shallow and it it's amazing. It hooks up to an app on your phone and you can scan it whenever you want to see what your, where your blood sugar is at. So I would be in the middle of a high intensity run. I'm like, Oh, I wonder I'm all scanning the back of my arm. And my blood sugar was like really high. It was like 140 or something crazy pure. And I was fasted. It was just purely from me dumping um, that glycogen out of my muscles and yeah. liver into my bloodstream. So that was really cool. That's um, actually was, really good. Cause you, you hear about that. You're like, yeah. So if you exercise really intensely, intensely, yeah. you're actually blood sugar goes up. You're like, yeah, that doesn't sound reasonable. Yeah. I mean, I mean I that's you, how it, it, 
Yeah. I mean, that's how it should work, right? It's giving you energy in your bloodstream available to make energy with very cool. Um, I noticed, um, one time I was shared, it's kind of embarrassing, but I shared, like I was on a first date and I guess I was kind of nervous because my blood sugar went sky high, even though all I ate was like turkey and lettuce, you know? Um, <laughs> so that was interesting to see my stress response, um, cool. from a social interaction. Um, also, you know, finding out different foods. Like I was like, Whoa, those low carb pancakes just spiked my blood sugar like freaking crazy and that actually what do sweet the, potatoes do uh i had a pretty normal blood sugar response to okay. sweet potatoes for me but but what's interesting is it may be different you know i the reason i even um started looking at it was because i had several clients that had one and one of them she's like my blood sugar response is like totally different than what people say like i her exact example was i eat strawberries and my blood sugar spikes like crazy but they're supposed to be one of the better carbohydrate mm. options and i eat a banana and like nothing happens and the girl from nutrisense said the same thing um the nutritionist that started help certain Nutrisense. She said that she hardly gets a spike from buying bananas, which are supposed to be one of the most glycemic foods. They get such a bad rap. Like in the keto world, you're like a bad person if you eat a banana, <laughs> you know? So like, anyway, very interesting. Um, and so I love this because it's, I'm actually realizing I need to get one of somebody from aura on the podcast so we can talk more about some of that stuff, but I appreciate hearing like what you're experiencing and your sleep, um, and your, um, response, um, on an HRV level, your heart rate level, um, from taking this molecule. Um, and, and, and I think there was like one other piece that I, I was going to add, which was, um, I, those 10 days in March in uh, 2019 that I went off, excuse me, 2020 that I went off of the product. I actually ended up getting a migraine. Um, and the kind of long story of a migraine is I used to get four or five migraines a year. I am in fact, a geeky scientist. I have a spreadsheet that lists my migraines. I'm trying to figure out yeah. like, What's yeah. causing them stress, exercise, food, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, so back to 2014, four or five migraines a year. I really started taking our product um, on a daily basis in 2019. Didn't get a single migraine in 2019. Hmm. Great. Like that's a that's a one one off and it's only four or five. My wife used to get nine plus migraines a month. Uh, and wow. I know it's nine because she had a medication that she would take Sumoptrin mm. or something that they only would give her nine. And so you just had to suffer anything after that. And she was suffering. She had more than nine when she, it took me a while to finally convince her to try the product. Uh, but when she started taking it regularly, she's down to one or two migraines every other month. Interesting. Wow. I was going to suggest keto because that's one of the main therapeutic applications of keto and it's well-researched as migraines. And I have had clients who have come to me only for help with migraines and have gone from like all the time migraines, like you're describing to zero, none yeah. gone. Right. Wow. So, um, could be a, and cause ketones also kind of act like a, an antioxidant in the body and you're preventing that oxidation from carbohydrates. Right. So when you go into that state, it's a very anti-inflammatory diet. That's why there's so many benefits with neurological disorders and, and also migraines kind of falls into that category. And also, um, auto autoimmune issues. Keto is amazing for that. I've had so many people with wonderful results, hypothyroidism, anything that's related to in inflammation, inflammation keto helps yeah. a lot. So man, like your molecule and keto could be like a dream team scenario if they're both helping reduce and well, well may, it, however you want to put it with the FDA may help yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Since it fits in an anti-inflammatory diet so yes. well. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it'd be very well paired with, with keto. So, um, that's maybe I have a lot of ketogenic dieters in my audience. So that might be something, you know, if you're using keto for a therapeutic application, you could try maybe the two together and see what happens. You know, yeah. that might be a little bit of a dream team. Cause I know well, like keto pairs might... well with a lot of biohacking modalities because yeah. you're already in such a receptive anti-inflammatory state that you, um, intend to experience the benefit of these modalities a little bit more when you're mm. in that state. So like keto and, um, hyperbaric oxygen, for example, pair really well together. So anyway, it might be something kind of cool to explore on your guys's end. Well, it might be worth, you know, we could maybe run a little bit of a study. And if you've got any of your clients that might be interested yeah. and you, you yourself included, I, I have done this on a, a couple of podcasts that I've been on where, hey, let me get you a couple bottles. Uh, and if if you're willing and want to, then we can, after you've had a month on the product, you can come back and say, hey, it's good or it's not good. Like, Yeah, I'd love to. And I'm sure my clients too that are on keto, that'd be really interesting to see what happens. What's interesting in my situation is like, 
So I think there's, you probably have people on your show and, and we just know there are people out there who have like put all their heart and soul into a product and then they bring it to you. And if it, if it doesn't have an impact on you, you almost feel bad about sharing yeah. that it doesn't have impact, right? right? This is a unique situation. I actually, like I never wanted to be a supplement guy. This is not, mm -hmm. I actually believe that people become supplement persons one of two ways. One of them is they wake up and they decide they want to be wealthy and they yeah. decide they're going to do yeah. it with supplements. Oh, and yeah. I have no problem with people being wealthy. That's just not how I ended <laughs> up here. The other is they have their own physical problems or maybe the physical yeah. problems of a loved one and they do the research and maybe they do keto or maybe they find other supplementation and now they're all excited about it and they want to save the world. Right. Hopefully it doesn't surprise you. I am not against people saving the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just didn't end up here. I've been making this raw material, this ESS 60 molecule since 1991. They do this kind of crazy toxicity, it's supposed to be toxic study in 2012 with this fantastic result of a 90% extension of life in these <laughs> Twistar rats. By the way, if we lived 90% longer, the average human would be 152 average. Wow. Not like max. That's like bell curve around 152. And so, so if I come to you and we have some people, there's some percentage, I'd say it's three to 5% who don't really experience anything. It just doesn't offend me because I didn't like pour my heart and soul into this. I, I do see all the, the value that people are reporting to me. And that motivates me to, to get out here, get on podcasts like yours and get make as much awareness of this research so that if people are interested in trying it, they can try it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, I would love to do that. And I would love to have my clients who are deeply in ketosis right now also see what their experience is like. Um, so yeah, I, I would be happy to do that. And I love your, that's definitely the the attitude of a scientist is being open to not getting what you're kind of hoping for, right? Like not being, not kind of not allowing, I, I, I really try to approach that as well in my own business and my own coaching is like, don't get attached to it. Just see what the results actually are. So you can continue to make good decisions, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I love that, that yeah, attitude. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, um, I think we've about covered it. There's so much to consider both from, you know, from a longevity standpoint, from a sleep standpoint to a mental clarity standpoint, super, super interesting. So thank you for coming on today and educating us about this. And, um, like we talked about a little earlier, hopefully we'll have you back on. Cause I do want to hear, um, from your friend, Patrick Juanis, yeah. who is, um, a, therapist, a uh, human behavior expert. And, and the way I described it earlier, the best therapist I can imagine. Very cool. Yeah. So we were talking about having him come back on with you and talking, going deeper into sleep, which I know so many people want to problem solve this, including me, you know, like the more minds that can come together and see what we're observing and what has helped the better. So um, hopefully we'll be having you again on the show here soon. Yeah, well, that'd be good. Um, what I'd like to do, I can give out, actually, we made a coupon for your audience. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be great. Uh, and Thanks. so they can find, if they're interested in trying the product, they can go to myvitalc.com forward slash inside out. I cut off the health, but we got inside yep. out. It's perfect. That's uh, what we usually use. Okay, good. And then, um, and then if you go in, so if you land on that page, great, you can find our products. All of our products, like so a, a typical bottle uh, is is about $99. You can get it on subscription for $74.95. So like a 25% savings. Uh, go ahead and take advantage of that savings. Uh, I, my staff is not trained to talk you out of, you know, your subscription. You can cancel. You literally can cancel it at any time. We actually have like 500 five-star Google reviews. So obviously awesome. we're, we're not convincing those people to stay on it. Take advantage of that discount. And then also use the coupon code inside out uh, and you'll get a, an additional $15 off of your initial order. Awesome. Thank you so much. And um, guys, that's my vital C is just the letter C. So mm. myvitalc.com slash inside out. So you can take advantage of that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And again, I appreciate you, appreciate you just um, bringing goodness to the world and helping expand our um, options of things that might be helpful in our healing and in our empowerment and our growth. So thanks for coming on today. Tara, thank you so much for having me.